six locals are vying to represent Scotch Bluff County's first district in the county commissioner race. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, six candidates are vying for one seat for the Scottsbluff County Commissioners in District 1. Earlier this month, four of the six candidates participated in a forum hosted by the Scottsbluff Gearing United Chamber of Commerce to tackle a variety of topics. One of the most pressing questions was what could be done to expedite the process of roads projects within the county? And this is what the challengers had to say. Well, it really boils down to funding, and only 2% of the <clears throat> taxpayers' taxes actually go towards road maintenance, and that's determined a lot by the state. I know Scottsbluff County has 165 miles of, of uh, asphalt roads, which once you put an asphalt road in, then you inherit a lot of maintenance costs. I look at the surplus uh, funds that the county has, which are the Keno Fund and the Inheritance Tax Fund. And those have monies in them that could go into uh, into roads and so there are excess funds in both of those right now and the county is well stocked or has a good reserve we're already having a lot of Coloradians coming up here and they're spending a lot of money in this area maybe somehow we could have them almost fund uh, road projects I, I believe tourism could play a big part in helping fund um, fund our roads and help help keep things maintained a little bit better. Incumbent Mark Record says now that the jail isn't costing the county money, we just need to continue upkeep on the roads. We got 165 miles of pavement in this in this county. We need to do 10 to 15 miles of overlay, chip ceiling, whatever it takes to keep these roads up in shape. We got to do at least 10 to 15 miles. I mean, just do the math. That's what it's going to take. We got to do that every year. Thanks, Mark. Rex Wilson and Timothy Reichert are also running, but were unable to attend the forum. Well, Nebraska lawmakers have wrapped up the final day of the current legislative session and have adjourned sine die. Before doing so, Governor Pete Ricketts delivered his final address before the legislature and summed up their work over the past 60 days in one word. Wow. What fantastic work you have done in this short 60-day session. Historic work, work that will have generational impact. Ricketts highlighted the passage of measures leading to more tax relief through the next several years, saying with lawmakers' help, they were able to provide 12 times more tax relief during his tenure than during prior administrations. The governor also noted additional state investments in public safety and water resources approved during the session, as well as lawmakers' work on more than $1 billion in ARPA funding. Ricketts said the entire legislative body should be proud of their efforts to pass truly historic legislation and thank them for their work. We'll have more news right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether it is building, buying, or renovating, we have the home loan or home equity line of credit to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. County Commissioners on Tuesday approved a resolution for the public censure of County Treasurer Monty Stoddard and County Assessor Bernice Huffman following a tryst in the county courthouse last year and subsequent conviction on a misdemeanor charge of attempted public indecency. 
In the resolution, the board said it did not condone the conduct of both last December and they displayed not only poor judgment, but also failed to protect and preserve public property. It continued that the commission found the conduct not only lewd, levicious, inappropriate, and reprehensible, but also offensive and disrespectful to the public, a betrayal of public trust, and unbecoming of Banner County elected officials. While the board noted they were without a legal mechanism to oust or remove elected officials from public office, they did state they believed it was in the county's best interest that both resign. The board approved the resolution on a vote of 2-1, to one, with board chair Bob Post voting against it due to some of the wording included in the amended document. Well, it was a celebratory day in Gearing yesterday as the Leadership Scotch Bluff 32 class was able to present two sizable checks to two local nonprofits. Last month, the class hosted their annual Hoops for Heroes fundraiser and yesterday were able to present more than $15,000 to both CASA and Capstone. Capstone Executive Director Monica Shambaugh says this money will go a long way. I can't wait to put it to use. I think I said at the um, Hoops for Heroes event that we're going to apply some of it to our fundraiser um, in, uh, at the end of August and first of September when we bring Sasha, New Sasha Newlinger out here. And then I think my board uh, wants to start paying down more on our building. She says Capstone's big annual fundraiser, the Light of Hope Breakfast, will be held later this summer. And Governor Pete Ricketts announced that all U.S. and Nebraska flags are to be flown at half-staff on Saturday in honor of Congressman Brad Ashford, who passed away earlier this week. Ricketts said Ashford was a dedicated public servant who cared deeply for the state of Nebraska. Ashford served Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District in the U.S. House of Representatives from January of 2015 to January to 2017. Ashford also served a total of 16 years in the Nebraska legislature. He was a state senator from 1987 through 1995 and again from 2007 to 2015. Flags will be flown at half staff beginning at sunrise on Saturday until sunset on the same day. Well, coming up for the break, Bill Boyer in with your weather, Chris Trell with your sports. KNB.TV News will be back right after the break. There are times in life when you just have to say this is a no-brainer and we are doing it. And right now is one of those times. Renewal by Anderson makes the best windows you can get. They have more five-star customer reviews than anyone in the industry. And right now you can get Renewal by Anderson windows with no money down, no interest, no payments for a full year with approved credit. A full year. Book your free estimate right now at rbawyoming.com. Renewal by Anderson. This is one of those times in life. It's a no-brainer. We're doing it. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. We got a whole lot of weather to unpack, so we'll start with this evening with windy conditions early. Winds taper off overnight into tomorrow, so things don't look too bad out there to start the morning tomorrow. But we're going to be in an extreme fire danger situation as it's going to be windy and warm, downright warm tomorrow, near record highs in fact. Storms arrive then rain turning to snow, especially in northern portions of the region, and sharply colder conditions coming for Saturday. Yesterday we hit 69 after a morning low of 40 degrees. Nothing in the rain gauge, and you'll notice now we've fallen over an inch below normal for the month and year, and uh, we need some more moisture. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's show you what we've got happening first here. Lots of colors going on on the maps. Uh, here uh, too much to even get to uh, but we'll show you what we have we have high wind warnings out for portions of the sand hills down into uh, portions of northeastern Colorado those high wind warnings run for tomorrow into early Saturday morning these pink shaded areas those are red flag warnings or uh, high fire danger warnings this darker brown is some uh, high wind watches these areas here 
uh, or a winter storm watch. Lusk down to areas north uh, and west there of Wheatland. And this red area underneath that current alert banner, we'll zoom out a bit and see that that red area that we're talking about right in here in the Dakotas and the portions of Wyoming. That is a blizzard warning. Yeah, they're looking at blizzard conditions again there in those areas. So wind, high fire danger concerns uh, here across the southern portions of the region and also a severe weather threat. And we've got blizzard conditions off to the north. This is the drought monitor. Now, this is last week's. Uh, keep an eye here on this part of the your map from last week's drought monitor to this week. You'll notice an expansion of a couple of things. First, an expansion of the severe drought conditions now through the rest of the southern panhandle. And then this area of extreme drought has also expanded out. Uh, so we're continuing to see a pretty decent uh, drought condition here in the local area, most of the area now under severe drought conditions. We've got 70s across most of Nebraska, 60s and 70s in Wyoming, the colder air well off to the north of us, 70s all across our region, 70 to 77 here this evening. But unfortunately, we have this to deal with. Winds, south-southeast, 30, 35 sustained. Look at some of these gusts, 40. We've had gusts to 50, 55 miles an hour today. Those gusts are going to continue for another hour, and then they will taper off. It's time to start, start talking about severe weather, the severe weather threat this evening well to our southeast. It gets much closer tomorrow. You'll notice some areas as close as, say, uh, uh, Shadron into far eastern portions of the Panhandle. This is a slight risk of severe weather, an even higher risk from North Platte and Point South into Kansas. That's where an enhanced risk of severe weather is. That shifts all east with Saturday. So we're talking about tomorrow the possibility of high winds, and large hail, most likely in these red shaded areas. That is where the enhanced, that brown red shaded area is, the enhanced risk of severe weather. Here in our area though, eastern portions of the Panhandle into the Sand Hills and back up towards Shadron and Rapid City, it's a slight risk of severe weather. Again, large hail and damaging winds gonna be the primary threat with any storms. On the bus tomorrow, we're gonna be in the low 50s under partly cloudy skies coming home, mid 80s and partly cloudy skies. So very, very mild conditions coming tomorrow. Tonight, we're going to be dealing with just a few clouds. That's about it. And then quiet weather takes over as we go into early tomorrow morning. It's going to get pretty active, though, as we go through the afternoon tomorrow. You'll notice we have highs or lows tonight. Yeah, these are lows in the 40s and 50s. Now, take a look at what happens during the day Friday. We have a brief break in the clouds, we clear out. It turns partly to mostly sunny. Then by 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon off to the west, we start to see some showers and storms. They're going to get going late here tomorrow across the region. Could see some training of that. You'll notice that spin of the low pressure system. It's going to set off to the east of us and slide across the area. That means on the back side of that where we get that colder air wrapping in, that is where we're going to be dealing with some of the possibility of some snow shower activity, and that looks most likely right now uh, in portions of northwestern Nebraska and then on up into uh, portions of the uh, Dakotas that we mentioned and into portions of Wyoming. That is where the, the blizzard-like conditions are going to set up here in the region. You can tell where the warm air is. Look off to the east of us. We've got 90s on the map for Ogallala up through Mullen, 92 in Valentine. 80s for most of the rest of us, 70s in eastern Wyoming. And as far as precip goes, we actually look like we're going to get a decent amount of moisture out of this. This goes through tomorrow into early Saturday morning, doesn't take into account any of the activity for Saturday. We've got some indications of maybe up to a half an inch of rain or more in some areas. It would be very beneficial if we can get that snow through early Saturday morning, going to be confined to the high uh, elevations. And that's where things are going to be confined to as well. As we take a look at uh, the European model, it shows all the activity that's going to stay in the form of snow is going to be from areas uh, right along the northern panhandle and then heavier here in portions of the Dakotas. Very similar agreement, uh, pretty close anyway, uh, with the rest of our models. This is the GFS model here, and it shows, again, that heavier snow in portions of Wyoming with lighter amounts here further to the south. All in all, I think in the Panhandle, the heavier precip of that snow going to be in the northern portions of the region and up around Lusk over towards Shadron. 
49 tonight, mild with partly cloudy skies, windy especially early. Tomorrow, windy and warm. Some storms are possible late. They should hold off till most of the day, even into the evening hours before we get anything in here. And then sharply colder, a drop of some 40 degrees as we go into Saturday. Sunday, we're windy, about 50. Look by next week, though, we come out of this system Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, upper 70s to near 80 degrees and not a ton of wind next week. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lisey helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Scott's Bluff High was the location yesterday for a sit down with a brand new Bearcat. A big Bearcat talking about Brock Knudsen, a 6'7", 285 pound offensive lineman who transferred over to Scotts Bluff High from Mitchell midway through the school year. He'll play a major role for Judd Hall's team this upcoming fall and he's got a lot of options to choose from as far as his college career is concerned. First off, let's start with the decision to transfer to Scotts Bluff. Uh, the majority of it was academics. I'm uh, thinking about graduating early and that wasn't going to be possible at Mitchell and it is here. And then a lot of it is college classes as well and like career paths. I really like the career paths. I'm thinking about going into uh, ag science. So I'm taking a bunch of ag classes like horticulture, which is something I never even thought I'd have interest in. It's like building flower arrangements and stuff like that, landscape design. And then we're doing a bunch of stuff in the greenhouse, so that really interests me. Another career path? Well, that could be on the gridiron, and we'll get to the college recruiting scene here in just a moment. But Knutson should fit like a glove for the Scotts Bluff offense this upcoming fall at Mitchell. They basically ran the Scotts Bluff offense, and he'll be a road grader for what's going to be a potent rushing attack this year for the Cats. They'll be one of the top teams in all of Class B. My, my goal ever since I was little was to win a state championship. Uh, my dad, he was a state champion wrestler, and I, I, don't, I don't, never really thought that that goal would be achievable for me in wrestling. I don't know, I just possibly this year, but foot, wrestling was never really my sport, so I was hoping to get that done in football so I could tell him that I'm a state champ too. And I think, I think that's completely attainable with who we have at running back. You know, Sebastian rushed for 1,700 yards as a sophomore. That was crazy. And then Braden rushing for a lot. I can't remember how many yards Braden rushed for. It was probably 12 or 13. Yeah, it was a bunch. So having two, two people that rush for over 1,000 yards is crazy. Knudsen, of course, has been garnering plenty of attention out on the recruiting trail. He's got a total of 10 Division I offers, eight of which are FBS schools, including Nebraska. And he got that offer from Scott Frost and the Huskers just a couple of weeks ago during spring game weekend in Lincoln. We had a little like players meeting with Coach Raiola in his, in his office in like the offensive line room, and then went to the, went to the game sat next to uh, Tyson Terry. He was a state champ wrestler this year as a freshman for heavyweight, so that was cool, get, getting to meet him. And then after that, we went up to the Players' Lounge, ate some pizza, and then Coach Frost told me to, he called me into his office, and then I couldn't stop smiling from then. It was just awesome getting to like meet him and talk to him in private. And then he talked to just us, like what I like to do, talk, like talk to us about my family, talked a little about a little bit about his family and what he does to like get away from football. 
Sounds like the Huskers made a great impression and came through with the offer. Another school that appears to be high on Knutson's list would be Iowa State as the Cyclones got their closer involved early on in the process. Head coach Matt Campbell, he's already flown in to Scotts Bluff to meet with Knutson personally at the high school. Uh, that was actually the first head coach that I met with. Um, all these other schools I just like gotten offered from my uh, positions coaches and then like Coach Campbell coming here was just crazy. Like I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was actually uh, on my way to class and uh, I think, can't remember who texted me. I think it was Hoodger texted me that Coach Campbell was coming to see me and then showed up later that week. Knutson says he'll make his big decision by the end of the summer to have everything taken care of ahead of his senior season, his first with the Scotts Bluff program. Due to NSAA transfer rules, Knutson has been ineligible for the track season up to this point, but that moratorium just ended. He'll be with the track team tomorrow for the twilight meet, and head coach Shelby Auberg said that he tossed a shot yesterday at practice 54 to 55 feet. That will cover it for today. The latest from right here at the FNBO Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. The 5055E from John Deere features the value of choice with a cab or open station, two-wheel drive or mechanical front-wheel drive, and transmission options. In addition to easy-to-use controls and loader compatibility, all of this is backed with a five-year powertrain warranty. The only thing easier than owning a 5E is operating one. See your John Deere dealer for details. Visit 21st Century Equipment with locations in Scottsbluff, Torrington, Bridgeport, and Alliance. Developing solutions, delivering success. Let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar.
The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. And finally tonight, the Midwest Skyview Drive-In is set to open for the 2022 season with the new family film, The Bad Guys, this Friday. We just invite the family to come back to the movies. Uh, you know, it's uh, both uh, the Midwest Theater and the Drive-In offer uh, low cost, affordable way to experience family nights together back at the movies. Uh, and it's a great thing. Now entering its third year serving the community, Midwest Theater Executive Director Billy Estes says he's excited about the new additions at their location by the airport. Well, we have new bathrooms up there and then we've uh, moved our concession trailer uh, to be centrally located behind the projection booth and uh, some new great menu options so you can come out and have a burger and a movie at the drive-in. Estes says they are always looking for volunteers to help at both the Midwest and Skyview and if you are interested, you can contact Krista Baird at 632-4211. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you here next time.